the name of Jesus, amen. Some of you have acknowledged the challenge of following the continuity or the thread line of this series from week to week. Even with the overarching theme of repentance, I think some of that is the series. Some of that has to do with the fact that our journey is spread out over five weeks. And I also think that there's something to a challenge that when you miss a week, like I was away last week, uh, you get back and you're kind of like, okay, where are we now? But I hope through the whole series, I hope through the whole series that one thing has stood out to you. One thing in this series that has offered you an opportunity to do that's different than a traditional lens in which we typically view Lent. And that is to shift our focus, to shift our focus away from what we do or we give up or I do to what God is doing and God has done. So speaking of God's doing, Maria, and I, where is she sitting? I have to, so I can look the other places, uh, not make eye contact. Uh, we, we are married 20 years tonight, 20 years tonight. There's nothing more romantic than having a nice, quiet dinner surrounded by 65 of your closest <laughs> friends and family. Uh, and Maria's not even a chili fan, like I am. So, God bless her. God bless her. In all seriousness, though, I looked ahead. I looked ahead, and seeing what the schedule was, we were able to slip away for two days last week and celebrate a little bit early. Not that tonight's not nice, but looked ahead. I remembered to look ahead. I remembered because you only need to forget your anniversary one time. <laughs> That's all it takes. Because the other person remembers for a long time that one time that you forgot. Even single people know that you don't forget to remember your anniversary. And so you try hard not to forget. In fact, you remember to not forget. You remind yourself over and over again. It's coming up. It's in four days. It's in two days. It's in 10 minutes. Whatever it takes. Oh, no, Maria's not that bad. She's great. She deserves the sainthood that she has earned. Uh, someone said she hasn't wised up in 20 years. She's not going to at this point. She's a heck of a woman. But who's not so great at re remembering or forgetting is me. Maria and others may have forgiven me a long time ago. But the one who really tends to hold on to stuff is me. My own shortcomings. My own failures. My own sins. There are times when I come to church and I confess my sins to God. I'm offered forgiveness and I know that God forgives me. But the next time I confess I'm in church, I still end up thinking about the same stuff that I've already previously confessed. And I think I'm probably not the only one. There are times when you and I come to church, we confess our sins, we mean it, we receive absolution, but then somehow we still end up carrying around those things with us as if God hasn't forgiven us. And yes, I realize that there are circumstances in life that our sinful actions cause. There's repercussions that we have to live with, and sometimes those serve as a constant reminder to us. But as we talk about honest repentance in the light of salvation tonight, the salvation won for us on the cross, we don't need to hang on to those things which God has already let go. And so unlike my anniversary, where I have to remember to not forget, sometimes with repentance, we need to remember to forget. Paul said to the Corinthians in our first reading that godly grief produces a repentance that leads to salvation. But he didn't stop there. 
He says, godly grief produces a repentance that leads to a salvation without regret. Salvation is not just something we get when we die. It's a reality that we live in right here and now. And that's part of repentance too. So how do we do that? How do we live in honest repentance and not be chained to the past? Well, we have to stop looking at ourselves and we have to shift our focus. We have to shift our focus from our misdeeds, our faults, our shortcomings, and we need to look on the very character of God. Our reading from Jeremiah helps us do that so well tonight. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, declares the Lord. For this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days. I will put my law within them, I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. All this talk about covenants calls to mind the promises that God has made to his people and has kept throughout time. Our God is someone who remembers. He always keeps his promises. Always. His covenant with Noah, his covenant with Abraham, his covenant with Moses, with the people of Israel, and his new covenant with you and me through Jesus Christ. Understanding the nature of God's character is critical for our understanding of salvation. When we have a God who always remembers we really need to hear verse 34 to change. And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. In other words, you guys all know who Jesus is here tonight. I don't have to introduce you to him, but here's the key verse. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. The God who never forgets a single date, a single thing ever, who always keeps his word, always keeps his promises, promises you that in Christ, when you are forgiven, God actually promises that he will remember to forget. Every time, every single time. The God who never forgets anything actually promises the opposite, which is to not remember. He commits to remember to continually forget that which has been paid for, that which you have been forgiven of. And part of having God's law written on your heart tonight, part of living in honest repentance, salvation today, not salvation tomorrow is being freed by remembering God's own heart to forget your own sins which have been paid for to let go of that which God has to not carry it around anymore I'm not saying that you should completely disregard that you're sinful human being that you're short of perfection who's continually in need of ongoing forgiveness nor am I saying to ignore the consequences that we live in, but in those things that you've confessed and those things you've repented of, those things in your past that you'd sooner drag around with you for the rest of time, but that God has chosen in Christ to forget, you should too. Because there is a sense in that that which already has been forgiven shouldn't rob us of repentant joy. Joy in the present. And acknowledging that, that too helps us to prepare to celebrate Easter. It makes room for the joy that culminates at the end of Holy Week. 
but it's an ongoing thing. Just like I had to keep reminding myself of when the anniversary date's going to come up. Don't forget. Don't do this or do that beforehand. Each time that you think about those things or Satan whispers in your ear to try to bring old stuff back around and throw it in your face to make you feel like it's not been forgiven, you have to remember the character of God and remember to forget. And so maybe you don't do this with your anniversaries or those important dates, but as far as your forgiveness of sins goes, Remember to forget. In the name of Jesus, amen.